Hello my friends, today is such an exciting day because I will be unleashing all of my secrets regarding ballpoint pen sketching. I will be talking about what pens I use, what sketchbooks I use, and how I create beautiful sketchbook spreads with ballpoint pen. This is such a highly asked question for me is what pencils and pens do I use? And I would love to talk to you a little bit about which ones I use, what I recommend, and my tips and tricks for really good ballpoint pen sketches. Firstly, I want to answer the question, why should I sketch with a ballpoint pen? This I think is one of the hardest ways to draw. Hear me out but also easiest. The secret is, it's all in your head. I know that's crazy, you're like, what the heck? That doesn't make any sense. The difference between a bad and a good ballpoint pen sketch, in my opinion, is your confidence. The reason for this is because you can't erase anything. There are definitely pens that you can erase, but if we're talking about a ballpoint pen, the idea is that you are not erasing any strokes and marks that you make. This is such a daunting thing, especially for artists that rely on the Control Z tool, on an eraser, and the reason that I think you should be getting into ballpoint pen drawing and sketching, and why this will overall make your art better, is because you don't have the option to erase your work. This forces you to be so much more confident in every single mark that you make. I have a very specific style, I have a very sketchy style, and if your work is different than mine in that regard, you, it's a lot crisper and cleaner, this might be harder to accomplish for your own work. Because I have really sketchy pencil sketches, like they're very almost technical and textured, I really love to play with different line weights and different shading styles and so because my work has this texture to it i am a lot more confident in putting light soft sketchy strokes down on the paper to establish my proportions and layout composition all this one thing to mention that could really make or break your ballpoint pen sketches is the excess buildup on the tip of your pen the main reason i will find that a ballpoint pen drawing i think is ruined is because I haven't been aware of that buildup and it sets down on the paper somewhere where I don't want that much ink to be. When you're drawing with ballpoint pen, be very aware of that mark and even have a tissue next to you to wipe off the tip of your pen every so often so that you don't get that excess buildup. Let's quickly talk about the pen that I am using in this sketchbook spread. I kind of clickbaited you for a second. This pen is literally nothing special. You don't need to use any specific type of ballpoint pen to achieve these results. Anything will work. Every different pen has different qualities that could be either useful or work against you when you're drawing, depending on the end result that you're looking for. So today I've been using the Zebra F301 BP pen. It's a 0.7 millimeter pen and the whole pen is metal with uh, a little bit of plastic, so it has a little bit of weight to it. I like this pen because of how soft these strokes can be. They can be pretty thin and delicate, and I really like to have detailed, delicate work. This pen works perfectly for that. However, if you draw larger, I would definitely recommend using a pen that's chunkier so that you can cover more surface area at once. A lot of the advice that I will give for constructing a sketch book spread is the exact same advice that I would recommend to maybe any medium that you would use and so this can be interchangeable for pencil for digital for watercolor whatever it is but when I start a sketchbook spread with ballpoint pen I like to have a, an image of where my large drawings and my smaller drawings are going to go I love to kind of make curated Pinterest boards for these sketchbook spreads and to have an idea of the mood and the vibe of the sketchbook spread itself then I can think of where I'm going to add my larger portraits, my more dynamic images, and where I'm going to do little filler drawings. Like in this case, I have some bell peppers, some blackberries, and the eyes were definitely a last minute addition. When you have an understanding of the main couple of drawings that you want a lot of visual focus and attention to, you can place them on the paper and decide what to do with those smaller empty spaces between those larger drawings that you're going to make. This is all a little bit of planning that you're going to be doing in your own head. This is why confidence is so important. If you are confident that you know where each element's gonna go, you know that in the end you're going to have a good finished end 
end result and when you're making your marks you're going to be putting them down with confidence because you trust the vision that you have in your head for this spread. I have several videos on my channel talking about how to draw the female face, anatomy, lighting, color, all that good stuff. So go check those out if you're interested and I don't really want to talk too much about mapping things down and proportions because that's generally applicable to most any medium not just ballpoint pen. I wanna talk specifically about when you are drawing with ink, what to be aware of. I wanna take a quick pause and say thank you so much to the sponsor of this video, which is Dossier. Dossier reproduces classic high-end luxury scents for a fraction of the price. Their scents are extremely affordable, while designer scents can range from $50 up to $280. Any scent is between $29 or $59. I decided to try out Woody Chestnut and Spicy Mimosa. Woody Chestnut is inspired by replicas by The Fireplace, which is one of my all-time favorite perfumes. I was so curious to see how Woody Chestnut compares and I think it's very similar. Dossier has a welcome offer of 20% on the website and you can get up to 30% off your first order by using my discount code. The extra 10% will apply at checkout on top of the welcome offer. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the sketching. The real big question to ask is, what do I do if I mess up? I think that's what everybody wants to know. You have this confidence, you're drawing, and all of a sudden you make the wrong mark or you have that excess buildup of ink like kind of splatter on your page and you're like, fuck. There's a couple of things that you can do to continue drawing and having a good experience to have a good sketchbook spread. And the very first thing I want to mention is having the right mindset versus giving up. So if you can think of any mistake that you make as an extra challenge to overcome or to solve, that is such a different mindset than thinking that you've ruined something. On this sketchbook spread, you might think, Sarah, you placed every single line perfectly. There are no mistakes. How are you talking about this? That might be the reason that you're thinking this because you don't exist in my own mind and you don't know like what the final outcome that I wanted for this spread to be. This applies to your own work and somebody else viewing your own work as well. You might have a specific understanding and idea of what you want your drawing to be and when you mess up or place the wrong mark you have failed in that execution in your own mind the truth of the matter is you have to pivot to creatively come up with a solution for this problem that you've created and this is what will make you a better artist there is no way for you to improve if you don't make mistakes and don't learn how to problem solve because the truth of the matter is if you're spending hours on an image if you make mistakes mistake, you can't in all seriousness every single time just crumple up the paper and throw it away. Even as I understand that you might be a perfectionist, I definitely have a lot of perfectionism in my own work. You have to reckon with the fact that things won't be perfect. We don't live in a perfect world. It's very rare to create an artwork with absolutely no mistakes, one that you're 100% happy with and confident about. The difference between starting over 10 times and finishing a beautiful sketchbook spread is your mentality, the way that you creatively problem solve. So if, for example, when I was drawing the teacups right at the top, I did not love how I shaded the bottom teacup and I was starting to see it getting super muddy. I didn't love the way that it was looking. I stepped back for a second and analyzed it next to the reference image and decided that I was going to improvise a bit. Even though in the reference image, the bottom cup was not as dark as I ended up making it, I took a step back, analyzed what I didn't like about the cup, the fact that I had placed so much darkness in the middle of the drawing when the reference image clearly has the middle of the bottom cup be lighter than the very right edge of it. You can see just the darkness compared to the other cups. At the end of the day, I just decided in general for that whole bottom cup to be much darker and almost blown out, decided to use mostly shadows to create that cup. And in the end, I think it looks fine. It's not, you know, my favorite drawing ever, but I definitely think that I save the drawing and continue to work. I think also sometimes with ballpoint pen, it can be so frustrating to see the 
line work that you create because it's hard to blend. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's impossible to blend ballpoint because that's not true. I definitely blend ballpoint with my fingers uh, because ink can still be wet and you can run your finger across it and blend it a bit. Pro tip, <laughs> you just have to be careful that the finger that has the ink, you're not like resting it on the paper because any sweat from your hand will reactivate that ink and make a mark down on the paper like a thumbprint or something. You have to be careful if you're smudging, but I digress. It can be really frustrating to see kind of an unsmooth shading. Just look real close at your drawing and start to slowly fill in those sparse areas to where you can have a more solid dark area with less of that pen texture that you're probably frustrated by. On this page, the drawing of the girl with a claw clip in her hair, I was not loving you know, the sort of texture that I was achieving, especially in the bottom section of her hair. And so what I did was I went in and I very meticulously just shaded in any of the spots that were lighter because they hadn't had shading and tried to even out the entire darkened mass of that area. If you have any specific questions for me, please leave them down in the comments because I would love to read what your thoughts are and to maybe answer them more concretely in another video. But the very last tip that I have for you is to use varied pressure in your drawing. This is definitely kind of a no-brainer, but it's something that I would love to mention because ballpoint pen is such a simple medium. There's not much to it. There's not much blending. There's no erasing. It's kind of what you see is what you get. Ballpoint pens are not, I don't think, a traditional drawing medium. I know there's a lot of artists that work specifically ballpoint pens. And the reason I differentiate a ballpoint pen to ink is because of the nature of the product. It's very much like a random, normal productivity instrument. It's not meant necessarily for illustration. Because it's such a simple medium, it really forces you to go out of your way with your creative problem solving, with figuring out how to make it create beautiful art. It doesn't do all the work for you. Not that any pencil will. That's a definitely a mistake conception but because it's such a simple instrument it's so important to play with your line weight the deepness and opacity of your marks and even the sketchiness of what you lay down if i have any tips for you it's if you go to work if you're in school on whatever random paper that you have to doodle with your ballpoint pen that's how i became confident in my own sketches thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it feel free to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe for more content i would love to see you around the channel i also post on instagram on tiktok and you can also follow me on pinterest if you want to see what i'm pinning for my sketchbook inspiration but until next time i hope you have have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.